Hi everyone, my name is Drew Korzanowski. I'm a certified podorthist and I own and run a company called D-Care Aquatic Solutions. Today I'm going to talk to you about running injuries, what they are, why they happen, and things you can do to help avoid them. Before I get too much into the running injuries, a bit about myself and D-Care Aquatic Solutions. I've been working in the field of podorthics for the past 15 years and I created DKOs for the sole purpose of trying to use my background as a pitorthist and my background as a runner to help athletic individuals. Runners in particular, but we help people of all ages, type, backgrounds, and uh, abilities. We offer many services to athletic individuals to help them improve their running or help them to recover from injury uh, from sport or from running. Things like footwear assessments and proper shoe, uh, footwear education. Uh, running assessments and form instruction, uh, custom made orthotics, proper compression wear use, and many other things. Decare Orthotic Solutions is the on campus provider for orthotics at Mac University. We're located in the David Braley Clinic. Uh, we also are the preferred provider of orthotics for the Hamilton Tiger Cats, for the Hamilton Forge, uh, uh, for many different pro athletes, runners, triathletes. Uh, volleyball players, and many other running clubs and athletic clubs in the area. To understand a running injury, the first thing we need to do is understand what happens to our bodies when we run. So when we go out and run, what we do is we're actually breaking down the muscle tissues, fibers, ligaments, tendons when we're running. We sustain little micro tears in those muscles while we do our running. When we come home and recover, those micro tears heal up and they heal up a little bit stronger and a little bit better than we were before we went out and ran. So if we went and ran 3 or 4K the first day, when we heal up our in those little micro tears, we can go out and run maybe 5 or 6K. And the body slowly progresses in this fashion. It's called the progressive overload principle. We need to progressively overload our body in order to make it better. Now, when it comes to running, and any other sport for that matter, if we overload our body too much, too soon, too quickly, those little micro tears turn into bigger tears. And those bigger tears then start to give us pain and compromise muscle function, and that turns into a running injury. So today we're going to talk about how that happens, why it happens, and how, how you can help to avoid it. On a graph, a running injury looks something like this. On the x-axis there's time, on the y-axis is tissue damage. The red line across the top is our injury threshold. It's the amount of damage any given tissue in our body can sustain before we develop a running injury. So normally when we're running it looks something like this. So the tissue damage builds up in our system we go home and recover and it drops back down. We go out the next day or a couple days later, it goes back up and it goes a little bit higher and then drops back down. Ideally, we want to keep this curve of running and recovery so that it stays below that injury threshold line. But in many cases, like we talked about before, what happens is a person might run too much, too far, too often, and the, cra the graph continues up until it hits that thresh, that injury threshold line. And once you hit it, if you're a runner, you know the feeling. You're out running, you know you're pushing yourself on a pretty hard run one day, the last couple kilometers of your, your run, all of a sudden you feel this twinge of pain that happens in your hamstring, for instance. That's your body crossing over that injury threshold line. So you stop, you relax, the curve, the line starts to come down below that injury threshold line and things, the pain goes away. But then the next day, we go out and run, guess what? That line jumps right back above that injury threshold line and we start feeling the pain again. A lot of runners, what happens is they, is they get into this problem where they go back and forth along that injury threshold line, feeling pain, resting, no pain. Feeling pain and they get stuck in this cyclical event of pain and no pain and they don't progress their runs. A running injury is generally made up of five different factors. Biomechanics, the way you run, what you look like when you're running, 
your alignment, which is how we're put together normally. A lot of this is determined by genetics. Our strengths and weaknesses of our muscles required to run. Mobility or flexibility of our muscles and joints involved when we're running. And the fifth factor, and probably the most important one, is training volume. Training volume being how much we run, how fast we run, how often we run. When we run and train, each of these factors, those five different factors, contributes a certain percentage towards us sustaining an injury. For example, if you have bad biomechanics or you run and you put a lot of stress and strain on certain areas, your biomechanics are going to contribute a large percentage towards you getting injured. The idea then is that we want biomechanics, alignment, strength and mobility to contribute the smallest amount of, per, of that the smallest percentage towards us getting injured. Then we can focus on our training volume, which allows us to run as much as possible to get the most benefit from running. So how then do we improve our biomechanics, alignment, strength, and mobility? There's five things we're going to talk about today on what you can do to help improve those factors. The first one, run. If you want to get better at running, you got to run. It's no different from any, any other activity. If you want to get better at sewing, you got to do a lot of sewing. It was Malcolm Gladwell that came out with the 10,000 hour rule that said, if you want to become an expert at something, you got to do it for a minimum of 10,000 hours. Running is one of those things. To get better at it, you have to do it. And you not only have to do it a lot, but you have to do it consistently. Now when I say consistently, I'm not talking about running seven days a week, 365 days a year. But if you're going to start out running four times a week, let's say, try to keep it at four times a week as much as you can. The body responds best to consistency, especially when it comes to running. I've seen a lot of people who sustain injuries because they start out running four days a week, then they go to one day, then they go to three days, then they go to six days, then to two days. When you do that, you're just asking for uh, an injury. It's a recipe for disaster when it comes to that. So run a lot and try to be consistent with it. Number two, to improve your strength and mobility as it relates to running, one of the best things we can do is to cross train or to strengthen our muscles in a way that's not running. When we perform an activity like running, especially longer runs or easy runs, which is the bulk of runs that make up a running program, the body thinks to itself, okay, we're going to run easy today, we're going to run long today. And what it does is it tries to conserve energy because it's running easy. And to conserve energy, according to the, br the brain, it needs to turn off certain muscles. But when we turn off certain muscles, those muscles can contribute to us uh, to have poor biomechanics or to run not as well. Cross training or strength training allows us to stimulate those muscles so that they're strong enough to continue working even on our light and easy runs and they help us to run those long distances. Examples of cross training, biking, hiking, walking, rollerblading, hockey, basketball, different sports. You're using the same muscles that you use for running but in a slightly different way. Strength work is another example of cross training. Squats, lunges, calf raises, glute bridges, planks. There's, number of, there's a number of different uh, strength training exercises that you can do that will help to prime the muscles that you need when it comes to running. I recommend to people a minimum of two days a week of strength training or some kind of cross training activity when it comes to running it's better to put in those two days a week of strength training and cross training rather than trying to run seven days a week. You'll get more from running by adding those cross training sessions in. Number three, follow a running plan. A running plan, a properly designed running plan, allows us to build the efficiency and endurance needed 
when it comes to running. A running plan will lay out when you should run easy, when you should run harder, when you should run longer in a very structured and scientifically based way so that you can avoid injury. This is key, I find, for many, many people who are moving up from running from the 5 and 10K distances up to half marathons and marathons. I see a lot of people in the clinic who run 5 and 10s okay, and they can do it by doing whatever kind of running they need to do, but once they bump up to longer distances like half marathons and marathons, the injuries start to come out. And again, a lot of it is because the body isn't conditioned to run those distances. A running plan will incorporate things like speed work, hill training, tempo runs, threshold runs, long runs. These are all different types of runs that are designed to prime your body to run these longer distances. Strength train or strength, uh, speed work rather, and hill work are the strength training of running plans. They're hard, they're intense, um, they leave you huffing and puffing, nobody likes doing them, but those are the ones that build the muscles that you need in order to hit your destination race or your destination goal. So following a running plan is a key component in helping to reduce injuries. Number four, use the proper running shoe. The proper running shoe is probably the most, one of the, if not the most important factors in determining your success as a runner. I have seen this over the last 15 years of being a pedorthist and also as myself being a big runner, getting into the right shoe is vital in helping you to reduce injury. You can have the best biomechanics in the world, the best alignment, best strengths. If your shoe is not holding you properly, that shoe is gonna throw you out of alignment and contribute to an injury. So getting into the proper shoe is such a key component. Your shoe choice is dictated by three things. Your foot type or your foot's alignment, the way you run, your biomechanics, and the ground or the type of running you're doing, road running, trail running, ultra running, speed running. That will determine which shoe you look for. Now when it comes to shoe fitting, shoe fitting is a whole talk on its own. But a general rule of thumb is when you get into, when you put a shoe on, you should be centered right in the middle of the shoe when you're standing looking in a mirror. You shouldn't be hanging off the outside or hanging to the inside of the shoe. You should be properly positioned right on top of the shoe. The other way to tell what's the best shoe or how to get into the right shoe is to see someone like myself, a pedorthist who specializes in shoes, or another individual who specializes in running shoes. Maybe it could be a, or perhaps a trusted shoe store as well. DKOs, for example, we have an online shoe consultation where you send in a form um, and we will send you back a list of recommended shoes for your foot type for running. Number five, the fifth way to help avoid injury when it comes to running is see a professional. Someone like a pedorthist like myself or another healthcare individual who is well versed in running, I might add, to help analyze the way you run the shoes you're using, your program, your history with running to help identify areas or weaknesses that you can work on. DKOs again has offers that service where we do an online or virtual running assessment to help people with their running. There's many other individuals who can help as well, but when in doubt, look to a professional to help you identify some of the strengths and weaknesses that you need to improve upon. Thanks very much for listening to us today. Hope you found the talk informative. If you'd like to learn more, go to www.dkos.ca where you can find more links and information on the things we've talked about today.